Hey everyone, Mark here from the new admin on Bl not listening to Blonde Dance Floor. I've seen many concerts over the years. All three of them. I've seen bands like Foo Fighters, Green Day, Cage the Elephant, Van Halen, I think the Blue Oyster Cult, Leonard Skinner, basically... Oh, wait, the point I'm making is I've seen a lot of great bands in concert. With all that said, though, this concert I just went to, Muse, in San Diego, at the Valley View Casino Center, formerly the San Diego Sports Arena. Even though this might be completely biased because I just got back from it, this might be the best the best concert I've ever been to. Maybe I'll reg maybe I'll completely not think this in five years or whatever, but right now this is my opinion. This is the best concert I've ever been to. Rarely have I just throughout the entire duration of a live show been smiling so much and just been feeling so good. I know it's kind of general, but I don't know how else better to put it. And as you can probably tell, this is this is pretty much unscripted, even though I do have in front of me on the computer the set list, because luckily on this website called Setlist FM, someone posted the set list of tonight's show. So I was able so I'm able to go through these so I can properly remember every great thing about this concert and during what song it happened. With that out of the way, let's get into this. I've heard a lot of great things about Muse Live. In fact, I even heard from people who absolutely hate their new album, The Second Law, that they're go that they're going to the live show because they're just because they're just that amazing live. And I know there's a lot of people that don't like The Second Law or The Resistance, which is weird because. The Resistance is my favorite Muse album. Sue me, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm like Pop Poser or something. And I also really like The Second Law. I'm not sure if I've listened to it enough times to really rank it among the Muse discography, but it's definitely up there. And this performance really made me love a lot more songs from it than I already did. Okay, just get into the show. The opening band was a band I had previously never heard of, but actually I had heard of them. They were played a few times on the radio through various songs, but I'd never really gotten into them. They're called Band of Skulls. They're um, uh, relatively, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say unknown because they were played on the radio, but not nearly on the level of being well-known as Muse. But from what I've heard, this band is very, very good. In fact, but in a way, I'm kind of surprised they opened for Muse because they have a very raw rock and roll kind of sound, whereas Muse is more, you know, big and epic and flamboyant. Bam Skull takes a kind of different approach. It's very raw, stripped down, kind of dirty sounding. Uh, in fact, I was even so impressed that I bought the album, their new album, Sweet Sour, which came out last year. And in case you're wondering, the song I heard on the radio multiple times was called um, The Devil Takes Care of His Own. And they played for about an hour. It was just a three-piece band. One guy in guitar, guitar and vocals, uh, a girl on bass, and a drummer. There wasn't really many, like, spectacle, but that's Im implied with an opening band. Aside from a few spotlights. I'm sorry if there are some pauses here, but this is one take unscripted just to get the raw reaction. Okay. So, after this, after the Band of Skulls, which I which raised my expectations even more, because because pretty much all, always the headlining act is better 
than the opening act. That's an implication when you're going to concerts. So we waited about like 20 minutes, maybe a half hour for them to set everything up. And trust me, there, there was a lot to set up. And then the lights came down and they started with Unsustainable. Now, if you know anything about this song, then you'd be very surprised by this because this is the dubstep song, aka the song they did, the second to last song and somewhat title track on their new album, Second Law, that features dub, a dubstep breakdown of sorts. I don't, don't want to make that sound negative, though, because I actually really like the song, even though I'm not really a dubstep fan. Although I do really, although I do find myself enjoying it whenever rock bands incorporate it into their sound in a unique and interesting way, such as like what Korn did um, in 2011. And the reason why I'm surprised by them opening with Unsustainable is the fact that it's I, I just find it weird that they open with such a polarizing song. It's like you'd think they'd like leave that for maybe the middle of the set list or leave it off altogether. But I actually really admire this move that music got some balls on him. I'll give him that. But it worked it worked very well. It, basically, it started with the lights going down, those little synths in the background, and then the screens popped up of, like what you see in the music video, the news anchor lady talking about all this stuff about... Honestly, as much as I like the song, I can't. I kind of forgot what it's about. I know it's something to do with political and environmental stuff. I, I really gotta look further into that. Okay, okay, I really got. Okay. And after this unsustainable, they went right into the album opener on Second Law, Supremacy. Now, a lot of people say that this song should be, should have been the theme song for the new James Bond movie. And I can kind of see where they're coming from. Definitely has that atmosphere. Definitely has that mood to it. That I can see backing an espionage like that. Those that was a very impressive. Again, a great performance. I'm gonna be. I don't know. I'm gonna be saying that. I'm gonna be saying this a lot. I'm very aware of that, but that just describes a lot of the performances here. Okay. Then after that, sorry. Matt Bellamy surprisingly went into a short version of the legendary um, cover of the Star Spangled Banner, at least that's from what I heard, of the Jimi Hendrix cover. Like he went to his own version of that that went on for about a minute, which of course everyone was going crazy over. And then from that, they were, went right into Hysteria, another great song. And then Panic Station, which is, at at the moment, my personal favorite Muse song. And definitely the fa my favorite on Second Law, obviously. That's applied when I say that. But what I really like about the way they presented this song in the performance is that... Is you see, throughout the entire performance, there was a bunch of screens behind them, and there was even, like, an upside-down pyramid of screens around them. This, this, just try to imagine in your head. And on these screens during Panic Station, they had an animation of... And this is proof that I'm kind of glad they don't take themselves too seriously, of a purple monster like a big purple animated cartoon monster, like dancing and wearing green sneakers. Yeah, it's just crazy. Well, not really, that's not right to right, but it was just a lot of fun. It really adds to the fun feeling of Panic Station. And one of my favorite moments of the night, for sure. Let's see here. And and from that we went into the other kind what I described as funky muse song, Supermassive Black Hole. Which 